Friday, Tom Perez, the newly anointed chair of the DNC, you know, the party that lost the White House, the Senate, and the House of Representatives, called the 45th president of the United States a bully and someone who didn't really win the election. In fact, Perez was a bit more exorcised in his rant. Take a listen. We have a bully in Washington in the White House. Donald Trump, you don't stand for our values. That's what they said. Donald Trump, you didn't win this election. Donald Trump, that promise you have with Putin, it's not going to do you any good. Don't stand for our values? Pray tell, Perez. What are our values, and what is it that you want us to resist? Law and order? The letter of the law? The Constitution? The plenary powers of the president to protect Americans? I have a prediction to make. While the left acts like children who just can't get over the fact that Hillary lost the election and simply won't stop their abusive invectives against the man who was constitutionally elected, yes, that's what I said, constitutionally elected, calling him not legitimate and his cabinet scumbags, that man is doing the job we hired him to do. He is building up and modernizing the military as well as strengthening law enforcement. With General John Kelly, he is ridding this country of some of the most dangerous elements who simply don't belong here and weren't allowed here in the first place, like MS-13, illegal gang members who swear an oath to kill others, the ones the liberal lefty mayors want to keep here, risking the safety of their own law-abiding American citizens. And with General James Mattis, the military is is poised to destroy those cockroaches known as ISIS in Iraq and Syria, just as President Trump promised. Imagine a president who not only does what he says, but can actually figure out what the end goal is, as opposed to President Obama, whose feckless foreign policy was to have no strategy and who graduated to contain ISIS and then decides to degrade and destroy them, all of which, of course, never happened. And all the while, these namby-pamby wusses obsessing that Russia interfered with our election and our democracy. But these bozos still haven't figured out what exactly Russia did. But they must have done something because Queen Hillary should have been coronated. Instead of admitting that the woman was so desperate for power that she sets up a private server to both collect money and run the government, and you know the rest. And by the way, the Russians didn't write her emails, the ones that sunk her, she did. And by the way, the Russians didn't give Hillary the questions before the CNN debate. Donna Brazil did. And nobody seems to care or want to investigate that Barack Obama danced with the devil in Tehran, whose people cut off our heads because we're infidels, the ones who yell death to America the ones he gave $150 billion to and another $400 million that they thought they could quietly get away with. So while they moan and groan about blowing up the White House in March and shout down the people on the right and literally try to suppress our free speech by burning down our buildings, our president is doing what we hired him to do. He's building up the military. He's dealing with the greatest historical threat that confronts America today. The threat of North Korea backed by China. North Korea with Kim Jong-un at its head, whose relatives all fear walking over a bridge in case it opens up and the piranhas end up eating them, and who by all accounts is, a, is as unbalanced as Barack Obama's budget. And so my prediction?
if and when the clash of the titans does come. These wimps, the one who will never give up their airplane seat for someone in the military, the ones who demand that they speak and shout you down so you can't, and who will never pay the price to speak, will be the first to pee in their pants and run under their desks and will thank their lucky stars that President Donald J. Trump and his generals have the guts and the instincts to put on their big boy pants every morning and face the reality of the real danger that is confronting America today. And that's why I open.